And here we are with yet another untold story, and I'm here with the amazing Ahmed Al Mazidi, and I am your host, another host, Ahmed. Oh, you're Ahmed Al Hussein. Ahmed Al Hussein. That's my dad. Okay. Al <laughs> Hussein. Anyway, today is interesting. Um, theoretical, perhaps, or a lot of research. What can we call it? Um, someone who's very interested in learning more and more and more about yeah, cultures, yeah. societies. Yeah. And she's focused on Kuwait too. And the weird part, the plot twist, she's from Hungary, coming all the way to Kuwait. All the way to Kuwait. Doing research about Kuwait. About Kuwait folk tales. Kuwait's families. Families. And sitting with Kuwaitis to yeah, talk about them. And she's learning, I think. Uh, she is Arabic. learning Arabic and yeah, the Kuwaiti dialect yeah, 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 yeah. as well. It's a lot. Let's just welcome her right after this. And we're back on the Untold with our very special guest, Kinga Nemat. Welcome on the show. Thank you very much. For Welcome, Kinga. I think uh, you're from Hungary, right? Yes. It's the fir- you're the first guest yeah, we've from actually Hungary. had that's from Hungary. I'm not it's sure a pleasure. how many Hungarian people I had the pleasure of conversing with. So this is a very 100%. Interesting. So it's a pleasure. And uh, I guess oh, we're very curious about what you do. Yeah, <laughs> It's my pleasure. Thank you very much uh, thank for you having me. Now, of course. So tell us about uh, what your specialty is. I know it's uh, in the world of anthropology. What yeah. is even anthropology? A lot of people might not be initiated on it. So what do you please. What do you do? Yeah, it's actually a very complicated question. <laughs> what anthropology is? Okay. Uh, everyone is starting by this, and we are starting by this. Uh, one year, basically, at the beginning of the education, mm. is uh, 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 is all about the foundation courses, uh, trying to discuss what anthropology is. Mm. I'm a cultural anthropologist. Anthropology has many, uh, aspects, many, so many aspects, yeah. many branches. And you're focused there is, on culture. There is physical anthropology. There mm-hmm. is cultural anthropology. So many different uh, types. Yes. Okay. But okay. as a word, anthropology, what does it focus on? Uh, I am focusing on culture, human culture. Mm-hmm. Now, what, what is uh, what is culture? That is an interesting topic. Mm. All the ways and all the means that people are cultivating their environment uh-huh. so your your attitudes mm. your ways of thinking your rituals your beliefs uh, your traditions mm. your beliefs your religion mm. uh, or cultural products mm. the system of how you perceive yourself the ideas mm. about yourself it's all parts of your culture basically study how the culture builds over time or evolves over time how it grows over time is that every element of it culture. it can it can be it can be historical anthropology for example yeah uh, cultural anthropology is focusing on contemporary okay what, what do you mean by that if you can sorry. contemporary like how people live and think okay, okay. Uh, as a society right mm. now um the easiest way maybe to uh, to compare it to sociology. While, uh, while sociology is, for example, focusing on big groups, mm. anthropology is focusing on small groups, small on the individual. Groups. Okay, okay, I see it. Now I get it. Oh, that's a perfect way. So now you actually simplified it quite a lot. So like sociology, when you compare it, sociology is all about the big uh, groups of people, like the big societies, big cultures. And now anthropology is digging deeper into the p- people, yes, the person-to-person uh, interaction. That's one way to put it. Also, while uh, uh, sociology is working with quantitative methods, all yeah. the, uh, anthropology is all about qualitative methods. Qualitative versus quantitative. So very yes. deep okay. into... Uh, uh, for example, our main tool is interviews. Hmm. So I'm sure it's interviews, focus groups, um, talking to people, and uh, yes, analyzing that's texts. How you, yeah, that's yes. how you build oh, your okay. knowledge about the culture. Yes, that's correct. Speaking of culture, you moved from Hungary all the way to Kuwait. What is the story of Kinga coming to Kuwait? Uh, before Kuwait, I was living in Finland. Finland. Mm. So it okay. was about sixty degrees of change. <laughs> <laughs> not much. Not much. It's really cold in here. <laughs> no, uh, in Finland it can be minus forty, and in the he, summer here it's, it can be <laughs> yeah, no, no. plus we, sixty. In Kuwait, so in Kuwait, we like to play a game. Yeah. We're the exact same temperature, just the difference in the in the sign. In the sign. One is a minus, the other is a plus. <laughs> <laughs> okay. You should well, try stand up, my friend. Ah, uh, that's what I do for a living. Oh. Really? I, I don't know. No, he does not. He, he, no, I was he does that for a living. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, anyway, go ahead. Yeah, sorry. So honestly, moving all the way from different cultures, and we're not talking, uh, we're talking about a big shift, mm. a huge shift from Europe to the GCC. Yes. 
How did that happen? I had friends living here and they invited uh, invited me. They uh, they told me, okay, why don't you try yeah. your luck here? And uh, I came over, I looked around. Yeah. Uh, I found a job in a very, very minimal time, like within a month or less than a month. Right away. Right away, basically, where I stayed for over two years. Mm. I loved working there. And, and that was part of what you do today, is it? But was it, did it introduce or did it make you fall in love with anthropology a bit more? Was it part of anthropology? Or no, actually, it... at the time I was, uh, I was taking a break from studies. I took quite a big, uh, uh, big break after I completed my master's in Hungary. Okay. And only recently I, uh, I started to pursue education again. So you started again into it? Yes. Um, perhaps, before, I'm sure we're going to talk about education yeah. a bit, but the, the question is, if we can go back in time and actually, because it seems like it's a very, it's a big topic, anthropology overall, and something yes. very deep. And it requires you someone... You still ran away from the question, what brought you to Kuwait? You went to Finland, and then uh, how did you come to Kuwait? Uh, by plane. <laughs> Okay, that, that's the answer. We don't have to hear more, I guess. <laughs> can I ask my question now? Yeah, you can ask your right. question now. The question that I have is, which I almost forgot now. No, actually, remember. So back, yeah. going back. So what was the starting point for you as a person to tell yourself that, hey, listen, out of all majors, out of all focuses, I want to learn about how cultures grow, how cultures evolve, uh, why that well it was actually actually the reverse because i didn't wake up one morning and and said to myself okay i want to know how yeah, human yeah. nature yeah. works yeah. uh what happened is that when you are 18 in hungary you have to decide if you are okay you are going to start working you are going in a, in a vocational school or what are you going to do with your life and for me it was always obvious yeah. uh, that i had to go to university i had That's, no choice yes yes uh and and uh, we had a book with a list of schools and with a list of majors and i started uh, checking and uh hungarian linguistic and literary studies was one of the choices and uh, and the other one was anthropology and i started both of them mm. i left uh, hungarian after two years and uh, i stayed with anthropology i just picked it up and i liked it why why did you like it so much uh, I believe that my teachers were in inspiring enough. Ah, okay. but I think the other side of the question it, yeah. is, if you, oh, fair enough, you're interested and you found it interesting, but why is it important oh, for yeah. us to know about history or culture? So what, what added value to, to, would you be able to bring to society once you study the qualitative, history, yeah. the qualitative things about society and, mm. and, and have interviews with people? Mm. What, what added value does it have? It's very important, I believe, to be able to reflect on yourselves. Okay. Yeah, of and uh, many people are saying many many things. Many sciences are yeah. saying many things. What uh, what uh, what is distinguishing us from 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 other living beings on Earth? Yeah. And one of the most important things is the ability to self reflect, mm. to ask who I am, mm. why I am here, and where I am uh, where I am going. Wow! How I am here. And this is basically what anthropology is trying to uh, answer, trying to answer, answer and mm. decipher. But anthropology is not answering. Basically, you are answering mm. because it's changing from individual to individual, from culture to culture. So perhaps if if you sit with if your job is to sit with people and you do culture interviews about the culture and so on, you know it, it depends so much on the sample size, right? It depends so much on how many people you sit with. Like how many people do you have to sit with to be able to get an answer? That's why I said in the beginning that anthropology is focusing on the individual. Anthropology is focusing on, on the small uh, small group. Uh, that's why we have a term like representative sample. Must, uh, must if, be a I, sample. if I'm talking only to you, yeah. that is not going to be representative. Exactly, that's why that's anthropology exactly. is able to work uh, also with questioners. Mm. I cannot do a deep interview with everyone, every single exactly. way. Exactly. That, that was... Uh... So you must have ways around it. You have inter I never. I, uh, I need to need to have second uh, secondary resources. I need to have primary resources. I need to do questionnaires. I need to such do a long process. I need yeah, to do yeah. interviews. Uh, I need to do my my readings. I need to do lots of lots of things to be able to say that the research exactly. uh, conclusion that I'm mm. putting out there, my hypothesis answer is correct. Mm. Must must be a team behind it. No, no, no. It's an individual. Anthropo anthropology is, is a very, very, very lonely work. Lonely work. Yes. How does that make you feel? 
lonely? I am, no, I'm okay with myself. <laughs> I mean, you started the sentence by saying that you have to know yourself and you have to know why you're here and all that. So I'm assuming you're someone with a lot of self-awareness. Uh, so you, yeah. you, you know your job, you know what you have to do, you know your cause and your why. That's, that's the most important thing. Like, you know, you know what you want to do in life. And uh, I think you're very determined. Yes. That's good. And, you, and uh, it's fair to say you're passionate about it now. I must be because without yeah. this passion, I will, I will actually yeah. give up. You will give up because it's a lot of time, a lot of uh, effort, you know, lots of pressure, time consuming, like I said. So you have to have a passion for it. And I can see throughout your conversation here today that you are very passionate about it. So that's beautiful. But also, also time. Um, how long has it taken you to be able to reach this point today? To be able to be someone that actually uh, you, knowledgeable. You, can you say you're an expert in this topic? Is is this what we can say? We can uh, say. So, but you're not there yet. You're getting there. You're 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 still working towards it. I mean, no, there is a expert. Uh, no, I'm not scared to say. But but where is the point? Who is the one to decide when you are becoming an expert? Fair. Like like Fair. like what's no, the definition no, no, of an expert no, 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 no. of of anthropology? I have reached a certain point. I can say that uh, that I I have a master's in anthropology. That mm -hmm. so therefore I reach that point. Mm. Uh, when I complete my PhD, I will be there. But if I'm an expert, I don't know. Define yeah. the word, please. Um, I guess, yeah, you're right. I'll shift the comments. I'll shift actually the, another question that's in my mind. You're doing research in Kuwait now, right? Yeah. Yes, correct. If, I, I was born and raised in Kuwait and uh, I've been here for a long time. And I think the culture is beautiful. But I want to like hear your perspective as someone that's doing more in-depth analysis. What do you think is something that stands out in this culture? Like, What's a beautiful thing about this culture that you fall in love with every day? Uh, it's it's very profanic, but I have to say food at the first place. But actually, I, mean, I think I'll ask my question right after yeah, exactly. we take this break. Exactly. Right. Okay. We're back on the Untold, continuing our anthropology conversation. We left off with food and you're coming to Kuwait and your PhD is in Kuwaiti folklore. Mm -hmm. So before I get to that, your favorite Kuwaiti dish is? Ah, uh, okay. Since you love food and you love the food in Kuwait, right? Okay. Uh, can I say uh, majbous? Yes, absolutely. Very good. You said it in the right way. Yeah. Majbus. I like it. I like you it. You like it chicken or uh, red No, meat? I like laham. Laham. <laughs> okay. I like laham. <laughs> All right, all right, all right. Let's step into your PhD. Okay. How long, when did you start it? Uh, uh, just in September. Just in September, one oh, of the best months of the year. Mm. <laughs> uh, congratulations. And your focus is Kuwaiti folklore. Uh, Kuwaiti folk tales to folk be tales. very more, uh, yeah. much more specific, mm. and um, focusing on the oral tradition and more specific in Kuwaiti folk tales. Before the definition is always why uh, that's my question don't steal my questions please because that's the anthropology that is always asking why yeah but as why did you want to focus on this specifically as a phd you're going to be a doctor because of this <laughs> yes so when i came to kuwait and when i started uh, my phd mm. back in a hungarian mm. university mm. i didn't want to leave kuwait and I wanted to get a PhD in Hungary. Mm. And I reached out to one of my old professors mm. and I told him, I'm here, there, I want to do a PhD. Can you please uh, help me help. and accept me? Mm. And he said, okay. What are you going to do it on? So I'm in Kuwait. It mm. seems obvious that oh, I'm going to do, where, uh, do my research on, right. on Kuwait. And he told me, okay, give me like 10 topics that you are mm. interested in. Mm. And I gave him ten topics, and one of the topics uh, was uh, was Kuwait, uh, was Kuwaiti folk tales, and actually uh, his topic is also folk tales, not Kuwaiti folk tales, but uh, mm. majority of his studies is also on folk tales. So he said, "This one, this, this one." Like we are both aligned on this yeah. Uh, topic. Yeah, yeah. So basically, my professor was the one who who set me on track for mm. the topic. All right, that's cool. And folklore, just to uh, define it, like he was asking. Yeah, actually, I'm, I'm, I'm someone that actually doesn't know the term. Like, what is it? Folklore or folk tales, is it? What does it mean um, what, what, as a word? 
okay folktale in in a literary literary sense mm. means uh, means the oral narratives that don't have a specific uh, author uh they are not authored by a writer ha have not been put down into into a book okay? okay these are the narratives that are being passed down from generation to generation so it's like traditional oh. stuff, like it's okay. tradition yeah. stuff okay so these are in the european terms and uh, the, the folk tales okay how much does it apply uh to kuwait that's one of my research questions if it is applicable to kuwait at all so the question I wanted to ask is that, I guess you're adapting your PhD now um, into understanding Kuwait's narratives and uh, how stories are passed from gener generation, generation to generation in the families of Kuwait. Mm. Yes. That's what you're trying to find out. Uh, yes. And what I found, and this is one of my research questions, is that this tradition is actually disappearing. Mm. And my question is why. I have done, let's say, a little bit bit more than two dozen of interviews okay. and I haven't found one person who was able to recite a tale for me or a narration that they have they would have heard from their parents or from their grandparents I asked them okay just uh, just tell me did uh, did your grand uh, grandfather tell you stories mm -hmm. around when you were sitting around the fire yeah. the camp yeah. or, you, or you were out in a hunting yeah. uh, expedition or whatever mm -hmm. and yeah yeah they, they may have but i cannot recall this ah. and and when i ask okay but do you do do you tell stories to your own child and no not really so my question my research question and i don't want to jump to conclusions here is why this is disappearing so why don't they have the stories now is that a question you're trying to shift it now to uh, why there? Uh, why storytelling doesn't have, uh, let's say, a very important role in passing down traditions uh, mm -hmm. among Kuwaiti people? That's uh, my question. And what, the people you sit with, uh, is there a certain age group that you sit with, or do you uh, do you differentiate uh, them? See, the uh, the age group is uh, is uh, roughly from from twenty up till forty forty five. But they are all saying that I have to go way back and uh, and talk to people who were here and lived through uh, actually the the invasion, nineteen ninety one. Okay. Uh, they all identified that there was there was a big change in society and yeah. there was a big change of uh, customs and traditions mm. in Kuwait at the, uh, after that time. Yeah. Also, most of the stories I managed to mm, dig up uh, from written resources. And they, they date back from before, before the First World War. Mm -hmm. uh, these are English language resources. Okay, so it's not uh, not Arabic. The I will I will start processing the Arabic uh, yeah. the Arabic uh, Arabic exactly. resources a little bit later. No, that was literally, by the way, my my my, my wonder. Mm -hmm. Like because when you say you do interviews, and you're saying you're going to you want to talk to way older people. Wow, there must yeah, be a language, language bar barrier. Uh, How do you see, talk to them? Uh, mm. Anthropology have, uh, has the tool set for uh, for that. It's a, it's a very old uh, practice for us. It's mm. a, it's a very pre common practice for us to uh, number one learn the language. I'm learning the language. You're learning and, Arabic. And yes, and I understand that. Kuwaiti dialect. And Kuwait also dialect. also So Fosha. Uh, the thing is, I'm not going to say anything because it's really yeah. going to hurt everyone's ears. <laughs> I'm, not to, I'm not here to hurt You anyone. said Mechbus the most beautiful way a foreigner could ever say Mechbus. Thank you. Now, now I have to, I have to have an A1 exam from you for that. <laughs> Just for the Mechbus. <laughs> yeah. So the language is uh, okay. Fair enough. Uh, okay. And and we we regularly use translators because not all anthropologists who mm. who are going out to let's say bond to tribes learn their their language and their dialects and mm. so so it's it's not uh, not uncommon to use the help of translators okay. when you're doing your field work mm. did this go against your expectations not to have stories uh, from people uh kind of makes me sad because it's making my uh, making my research a little more difficult than i expected yeah, more vague, to be. Like... because all the resources that i have read are saying that oh yes uh, Arabs are storytellers and I experienced that through my everyday yeah. life it's uh, it's uh, uh, very playful actually 
other people are very very playful yeah, yeah. and uh, joking yeah, in terms well. of conversation in terms of social life so i i expected like some more stories mm. and i try to give them some help sometimes like i mentioned tantal i mentioned himarata gaila um uh, those fantastic creatures but that doesn't ring a bell at all okay and uh, when i mention other stories other narratives like for example captain shakespeare mm. uh no nothing mm. when i uh, i ask them okay just freely say something about your favorite stories or or any anecdotes that you have heard about sometimes some beliefs uh, or some superstitions about the uh, um uh, about the uh, uh, genes or ghosts or, mm. or these kind of things come out uh, but nothing specific let's take this research and throw it into anywhere else in the world mm -hmm. let's say europe okay mm -hmm. let's say the us okay how do you expect people would do it would, would, do you think people would open up more is it a cultural thing is it or would you expect the same reaction across the world uh no it's it's always culturally rooted mm. and uh, you cannot expect the same result uh, from geographic or cultural area to other yeah. area it's always going to going to differ for example when you compare uh, compare it to hungary and other european nations uh, their development their epistemologic development to use complicated mm. words like uh, how ethnography or cultural anthropology anthropology in general yeah. developed or evolved it was uh, rooted in 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 um, social events mm. it was uh, rooted in industrialism it mm. was rooted in revol revolutions it was rooted in nationalism uh, it was rooted uh, in people looking for for their roots and their uh, and their identity mm -hmm. so it was basically a cultural movement from the uh, 18th 17th century mm -hmm. to collect search uh, note down and publish these uh, these stories and to make sure that they are becoming a part of uh, a part of a national identity not only part of it but uh, but they they are a very important cornerstone of it mm. you haven't found the same in Kuwait no. Um, we can do an exercise since you're doing a research on, mm -hmm. on Kuwaiti fo folklore mm -hmm. and folk tales. Mm -hmm. can, can you we, tell me one folk tale? I yeah. wanted to. Could I, I benefit wanted to you test... in any way? Uh, yeah. What's if a you question could... you can ask? Yeah. Okay. We can be part of your PhD. Yeah. 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 Can, you write can, you, my name? can you please tell me any narratives that uh, any anecdotes that you anecdotes have heard, uh, heard from, from my your parents, old, yeah, parents or... and older people? Something so is it a story that... that I heard from my granddad? Yeah. That you yes. Yeah. Something yeah. that they told you to entertain you or to scare you. Or a story. You or, or a story. A scary is uh, uh, there is one they used to scare the kids with. Uh, you are going to talk about the tantal. You okay? You know this already. Okay, you know so much about it. yeah the tantal. <laughs> I have one. You I have can, one. I, yeah. I can say before because I think we're gonna get to the end of the segment. Yeah. Uh, when I was younger, uh, I'm Lebanese though. Do I? Do I? Am I? Yeah, yeah. You, 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 okay. you, you're one of us. One of us. One of us. So essentially, uh, they, used to, they used to say that uh, <laughs> someone called <laughs> Abu Kis. So Abu basically, <laughs> the person that's holding the, the bag. Ah. He's, uh, <laughs> it's like this story is supposed to be like behave. Or he's gonna come for you it's like it's like it's gonna the kidnap. guy with the bag is yes, gonna yes, come yes. for you so who is Abu Keith? <laughs> <laughs> I love it since you're asking so essentially when I was younger as I told you so basically we were told that if we were to uh, go down and to the playground late if we were to misbehave mm -hmm. uh, our parents would always be like go back home early or otherwise this Abu Keith, ridiculous name I know Abu Keith basically means uh, the man with the bag right? yeah, yeah. he's gonna so he's basically gonna you. kidnap he's gonna kidnap you He's basically going to kidnap you, so you, be, you better behave. And we actually lived with them by that. Now, when we were younger, we actually were scared of it. Yeah, you believe it, of course. We would tell our friends, we are like, go back home early, otherwise Abu is going to come uh, for you. Do you have any idea how Abu Kis looked like? Do you have Honestly, any, 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 no, they never uh, any image in your mind? I can Abu imagine uh, a tall guy that's holding a big, a big black uh, a garbage bag <laughs> and he's about to put me as a kid inside of it. <laughs> that's oh what I imagine. God. Oh my God. Uh, have you heard about anyone who actually was taken by this guy? No, Abu Kis definitely does not exist. It's, it's, it's <laughs> just a myth. It's just yeah, myth. of course, yeah. but but me, it can uh, can uh, can be perceived as real right. by, yeah. by many Maybe people. Maybe it in happened many that 
one time and it explodes. No, n- never. I don't think yeah. ever. But I think. Um, but I think each uh, like Abu Kis, I haven't heard that terminology before. Yeah. But I think Kuwait has its own terminology for the same concept. It's the same concept. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. Exactly. I think like each concept. Arab nation has yeah. the same concept even, with a different even name. Even Boundary, think... we have something like this. Yeah. We call it the mumush. Mumush. Uh, <laughs> mumush. You know something interesting? I think I used to when I, oh, I for some reason I have this memory now. Whenever I was a kid, a little chubby kid, I would be looking at people, and because my parents always put in my mind that there's Abu Kis, I would start to think, who could it be? Like I just stopped looking outside. I was like, like, could it be that guy? Could it be him? Could it be him? Could it be him? Could it be him? And so okay. I was like, you know, so that was me. So you start ending pointing fingers. Go ahead. <laughs> we'll be back up for the wrap up. What a beautiful conversation we're having here. Wow, so much to learn from her, honestly, and her interest in Kuwait. I love it, honestly, as a foreigner coming in, wanting to learn our traditions, our culture, dive into the traditions and find the unknown, the untold. Take care. Now, I think, (laughs) take care. I think the interesting thing is learning the language. Yeah. I mean, honestly, you're learning Kuwaiti dialect. Yeah. I am trying my best. <laughs> I was born and raised in Kuwait. <laughs> I can barely say a word or two. But I think in learning the language, mm. learning the culture, l- meeting people, very brave. Mm. Um, I think if anyone is there to support her with, uh, with research, uh, you have to, honestly. Honestly, yes. And the best of luck in your PhD, pursuing your PhD. And I believe you have this. And we have you here. We have your back. If you need any anything in yeah. terms of getting the right people to interview, we're here. Thank you for coming on our show. Thank you for tuning in. Not, yes, another episode tomorrow. The usual. See you later. See you.